let's look at Del Valle and if he should have bowed out to embolden the Gary Chico vote. Let me just go over some right. wards here quickly. When we look at wards one through nine, Emmanuel takes all of those wards hands down. But then when we go from 10 to the 14th ward, it's all Gary Chico. Right. Mm -hmm. But what really fascinated me were wards 15 through 18. Lord have mercy. Those are predominantly black wards. One of those wards is 97% African American, and Rahm Emanuel wins them all. Let me get right. back on task, though. Hold up, Mary. I'm coming back to Reverend Wilfredo yeah. de Jesus. Yeah, I, I don't even know if it would have made a difference as a, if Del Valle would have joined in with the camp of Chico. Mm -hmm. I think Carol Mosley Brown had to buy out as well. I mean, it, we, you knew, and she knew, that her candidacy after that comment was going south, it was, it was going wrong. If we really wanted to work for the city of Chicago, even if you add the 52,000 that Del Valle mm -hmm. got to 139 of, uh, of Gary Chico, we're still short. But I think if we would have gotten a coalition, mm. right. we and would have had a new mayor, a, a new direction. A coalition, a new direction. What does that mean though? What does that mean? Well, I mean, if you, if you wanted a change from what Mayor Daly has been the last 20 years, we're just going to get another four years of the same. Oh, wow. Chico would have brought a different view to it, a coalition, the Harold Washington he would coalition. Have, he would have had to build a coalition. Yes. You mm -hmm. see, because once you sit down and say, okay, we're going to get together here, and we're going to, and then we got our thinking caps on, yeah. as they say, we're going to get together and we're going to uh, build a, yeah. uh, this relationship so that we can put a, make history here. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with making history. You right. know, Barack Obama made history. Uh, once you do that, then, you have a chance to change something. Mm. But if you don't have to do that, if right. you don't have to make those concessions, if you right. don't have to sit down with anybody, yeah. then you're going to get the same old thing you always I, did. I <laughs> sat down, just to add to that, with African-American leaders, and I said, we need to get together. When I say right. we, yeah. black and brown, mm -hmm. to make history here in the city of Chicago, everyone had to fall in line. That was what I was told. In other words, fall in line with the African-American consensus oh, wow. uh, and whatever the Hispanic wanted to do. Yeah. But there was no coalition and the, and the irony right. is, uh, even though Mary is right, that whites weren't talking about a coalition white candidate. You could best believe they, they were talking. They ended up oh, with yeah. one. They had one. Yeah, How many whites were on the ballot? Yeah. Right. Uh, as soon as Rahm made it clear he wanted to run, everybody else got out of the way. And he made it clear quick, Steve. I mean, the website was up, boom, overnight. I'm coming back to Chicago. Yeah. I'm going to run. And then, boom, the, he, uh, he goes to, to L.A., yeah. he hooks up with his brother, raises Comes capital, all that money. gets television mm -hmm. commercials in the mix with Barack Obama, yeah. the president. It was unbelievable. Let me take some phone calls. I'm going to go to Fred. I'm sorry, I'm going to go to Daryl. Daryl, thanks for calling. Off 63rd. Daryl, what's on your mind tonight? Hi, Daryl, what's hey, on your I, mind? I just wanted to say we retired to the old machine. I'm from 47th Street, grew up in the Rosenwald. And over the years, there's just been a machine this and a machine that. Daryl, what do you mean by the machine? That. Talk to me. Daryl. They only used us. Mm. When we had Robert Taylor, they used us for the vote. What was, what were they at? And now there's no representation, and Carol Mosley Brown went crazy on us talking about somebody smoking crack. That was not the form for it. Wow. So now we've taught you guys a lesson. Y'all need to get y'all acts together. Wow. Daryl, thanks for the call, man. I appreciated the implosion of African Americans. And you know, as, as, as much as I don't want to leave race, I think it's a fascinating topic. I, I want to go back to your article, Separate, Unequal, and Ignored. What does that mean, Steve? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we at the Reader took the latest census stats and aggregated them for community areas and found, which is something that's not surprising for Chicago, uh, we still have 21 community areas that are 90% plus African American. More than half of <laughs> Chicago's blacks live in those areas. Uh, it's been that like that since I grew up. We had a white south side and a black south side. And the, Dividing line was Halston, and then it was Ashton, and then it was Western. Right, I remember those and, days. And I grew up thinking, this is going to change, you know? And, you know, I grew up, I got married, I had kids. It didn't change. <laughs> and I think that separate is not going to be equal. And we try to do that with community development, uh, programs that are important. But I think until we attack segregation, I don't think the people who were Brown versus Board people or the Kerner Commission in 1968, 
who said we were he heading t towards different societies. I don't think they were wrong. But, but people don't want to talk about that. You see, we can't change it because, and now we're, since we're in this post-racial age, uh, because of the election of uh, President Barack Obama, and people thinking that, well, now we can, we've transcended race, we have not. Mm. Not as long as you have uh, communities that are still 97, 98% African American. And those communities, by the way, happen to be uh, lower income, yeah. more yeah. impoverished. Uh, look at the census. Middle class blacks have moved on. They've yeah. moved mm -hmm. out. They're moving in areas that are not are segregated. Yeah. They're and living right next, their next door neighbors are not African American. And the property value and the schools mm -hmm. and the crime rate mm -hmm. reflect such. And that's what really frustrates me. Let me get to another, uh, I'm gonna get to phones in a minute. Let's talk about this transition team. You talk about a coalition, man. I'm telling you, Rahm, man, Rahm Emanuel, you talk about a guy who is a spin doctor. On this transition team, he has what some would deem as the usual suspects. Let me read some okay. of them. Reverend Byron Brazier, oh, Apostolic Church of God, Woodlawn. 63rd, Felicia Davis, an administrator at Kendall College. Rebecca Gonzalez, a vice president at Casa Central. It looks like Steve Cook, an executive at Credit Suisse. Um, David Mosina, president and CEO of the Museum in Science and Industry. Sarah Pang, an executive at CNA. Also, Judy Irwin is on there, a former right. state representative and one-time director yeah. of the Illinois Board of Higher Education. How do you choose a transition team so quickly? How do you even go about choosing a transition team? Yeah, he, I mean, he had, uh, if you look at the names, these are people who supported him. You don't see anybody there from Gary Chico's camp trying to build a coalition from Miguel Del Valle. <laughs> you don't see that. These are all people he who this supported. This is still Chicago. It's still Chicago. <laughs> I mean, so the transition is not a transitional team. Mm. He chose people who went with him. Uh, if you really want to heal the city, you would have gone and cross over and say, give me one of your two people. We want to build a consensus. Yeah. That's not happening there. Yeah, yeah. Mary, what do you think? Uh, you know, and we, we can't fault him for choosing people that supported him, or can we? Well, I, no, I don't think you can. First of all, I wouldn't fault him. I think that the man's brilliant. He ran a brilliant campaign, and he's, uh, and why? how did he get his transition team together so early? Well, with those numbers and the way the media was pumping him up and saying he was a winner for what? how long we've been saying that, for months, hmm. uh, he probably already had these people lined up. But having said that, um, what I do like about this transition team is that you begin to see some names like uh, Reverend Brazier. Well, you can't ignore him. Right. You know, he's new leadership. He's not Arthur Brazier. His father's passed on now and he's done his bit. Okay, this is new leadership. <laughs> yes. uh, so I do think that he's, he's, he's trying at least, he's on the right track. I'll put it that way. Steve, on the right track with the transition team? I don't know if a trans transition team really means a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's a lot of uh, uh, makeup, and uh, we'll see what Rom, Rom's going to do what he wants to do. Um, so, you know, I think there are good people there, uh, and they're also the usual suspects. I yeah. think that's true. I think it could have been more inclusive. Yeah. Let me take Fred on the phone lines. Fred, you're on Off 63rd. Thank you so much for calling us. Fred, what's on your mind? Well, let me say good evening to you and your panel there, yeah, first of all. Thank you. And uh, one thing I have to agree with, and that is with Ms. Mitchell, and that is she has been directly on target when it comes to saying that, you know, in the black community, uh, we've got to understand political power. We've been taught how to politically vote, but not how to politically be wise with how to use in gathering power when it comes to whom to vote for. And I think really we don't need so much as a consensus candidate we need a strong consensus and coalition building message. Right. The mm. message has gotten lost. Thank you, you for know. the call. Appreciate that. You know, power and voting. I think people like to vote for someone, one, that they can believe in. Of course, that was the whole President Barack, uh, Barack Obama slogan. But two, someone that can reflect them. And three, someone who will help them. And I think that in this campaign, people say, well, you know what, the best default here is Rahm Emanuel. Well, <laughs> I think the other thing that's being overlooked here is that you look at the uh, areas of the city that you talked about, 15, 16, 17 wards. Mm -hmm. these, these are wards where people, uh, black children were being killed. Mm -hmm. You know, almost daily, some black child was being shot. People were frustrated. Uh, Rahm Emanuel ran a great, a great uh, commercial mm -hmm. 
uh, talking about how he was going to take the streets back from the gangbangers and, you know, these are our streets, these are not their streets. That was powerful stuff yeah. uh, for people who are suffering through that type of crime wave. And the second thing is that, that, that I think we have to look at is that Rahm Emanuel had a celebrity persona. Mm. He still has a celebrity mm -hmm. persona. Yeah. You know, people sitting around thinking that uh, he's just, a, he, he worked with uh, Barack Obama, and that's the reason. No, he's a mini, not even a mini celebrity. He's a major celebrity. He's a star. Now. He's a superstar. Yeah. And so, therefore, I think that that's been att attractive to a lot of voters who didn't even know the issues. I asked some people about the issue. They didn't have a clue. They went in there and voted for him just because. Yeah. Let's talk about runoffs quickly. You know what? Let me see if I can get the, is it Floyd on the phone lines? Floyd? Floyd, thanks for calling off 63rd. Floyd, what's on your mind this evening? Hi, Floyd. What's on your mind? Okay, you know, let's talk about these runoffs that you just mentioned, Mary. Mm -hmm. um, 15th, 16th, 17th Ward. Uh, looks like we got a runoff in the 20th Ward with a rapper running, Rhyme Fest. You know, uh, <laughs> the people are disgruntled in those wards. Right, right. They're very disgruntled. And, and the, the people who uh, are, are ended up in these runoffs, on the South Side Wards at least, they did a poor job of dealing with the crime. Let's just say it like it's it is. Bad. It was bad. They were helpless. You know, they couldn't, they showed up too late when after someone, they, mm -hmm. what they would do is show up after someone was shot. They didn't have a plan or a yeah. program. They didn't, they, they really did not, uh, to me, do their jobs. Mm. And so, therefore, a lot of people came after them. Uh, so they're, they're, they're disgruntled. The question is, and it's still, and it's the question on my mind, why did they think yeah. that Carol Mosley Braun or Gary Chico could not help solve that problem. Why mm. do you think that only Rom could? Having having not seen Rom solve these problems in Chicago, mm. yeah. you know, why do you think he could solve the these time problems? goes so fast? I got to get some final comments from the three of you. Is the city going to be okay, Reverend Wilfredo De Jesus? Well, I, I'm a man of positive and pray, prayer, so <laughs> I'm going to be praying these next four years <laughs> that Rom really, if he really means that he loves this city, not just because he just got elected. Uh, that he would reach out to every community and begin to heal the wounds that have been there uh, for many years. Mary, quickly. Is oh, it's going to be a very exciting time for journalists. I think Ram is going to give us the ride of our lives. Oh, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> hey, here come the curse words. <laughs> Steve yeah. Bogier, is the city going to be okay? Uh, yeah, sure it'll be okay. Uh, it's a tough time to be a mayor for anybody, and a lot of big cities are struggling, not just Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I want to thank the three of you, my guests, Steve Bogier, Mary Mitchell, and Reverend Wilfredo De Jesus. And thanks to my callers tonight. You know, you have chosen your next mayor, but your responsibility now is to be active in your community. Call me after the show and tell me what's on your mind, 773-487-135. To send me an email at Gerard at Off63rd.com. And to read McClendon opinions, go to www.Off63rd.com. We thank the McCormick Foundation and the Field Foundation for their contributions. That's Off63rd for tonight. I need you to join us next Thursday. Hey, remember, victory, it's yours. Stay positive, keep your head up, and always be encouraged. Good night.